Hello everyone, my name is Alejandro Selly. I am a student at school and today I'm going to talk about a temperature dependent study for hydrogen crossover in a polymer electrolyte membrane used in a PEFC. This presentation is divided in four items. Introduction, methodology, results and conclusions. The introduction. Currently, one of the main problems is global warming caused by greenhouse gases produced by internal combustion vehicles. As a solution to this problem, fuel cells have merged, which only emit water and heat as a result of the reaction that takes place inside. Fuel cells are still in the research stage. And one of the topics of interest is the evaluation of the product exchange polymeric membrane. The membrane is known as the heart of the cell, since it allows the patch, passage of protons from the anode towards the cathode, achieving for the completion of the redox reaction along with the generation of an electric current. For this reason, it is necessary to have some method that allows knowing the state of the membrane. Among the best known is the linear sweep voltammetry, which is an electrochemical method that sends a voltage signal between the anode and the cathode of the cell, and an electrical current is obtained as a response, with which information of the hydrogen crossover that occurs through the membrane can be obtained. The PEM is fabricated for permitting only hydrogen protons to pass from the anode to the cathode side, thus completing this energy conversion process. However, a small number of hydrogen electrons can also pass through the PEM, causing losses in the cell performance and reduced fuel cell durability. It is known as hydrogen crossover as can be seen in figure one. This factor provides a valuable indicator of the health of the membrane. A pristine membrane has a constant low hydrogen crossover, whereas a degrade membrane presents a short circuit increasing the hydrogen crossover as shown in figure two. On the other hand, some studies have shown that hydrogen crossover is affected by several parameters such as temperature, relative humidity, pressure drop, and current density. Methodology. Several teams were used to carry out the experimental part among term is the integrated system that consists of a fuel cell test system that allows the complete evaluation of the PEFC in real time. This system has a current load controller, tanks humidifier for the reactant gases, heaters for the anode and cathode, controller of mass flow, and PEFC response meters, and auto multi-gas valve that permits the supply of an exchange of reactants automatically, thereby hydrogen was fed at the anode site and nitrogen was fed at the cathode site. A potential step to apply linear sweep voltammetry tests to obtain the hydrogen crossover, all mentioned systems were connected to a computer. It was commissioned to control the variables involved in the study through fuel cell software. On the other hand, a single PEFC was used with a natrium 212 as PEM, an active surface area of 25 centimeters square and a thickness of 50.8 micrometers. Two carbon cloth gas diffusion layer also were used to compact the PEM and a catalyst layer with 0.5 milligrams per centimeter square of platinum. In addition, a methodical process was carried out to reduce the possible sources of disturbance in the collected results. Before starting, nitrogen was fed 
through the conduct of the PEFC system for 20 minutes to remove any remaining impurities. From previous experiment, it was verified that the nitrogen outlet is occurring correctly, thereby indicating that there are no, no obstruction inside PEFC system. As can be seen in figure seven, the potential stand current has been represented as IL, which is divided into two currents, the hydrogen crossover current and the short circuit current, IS. It is important that it, it is important to indicate that in a membrane always there will be a diffusion of hydrogen due to its porosity. So the current IH2 will always be present and can be calculated graphically as the point at which the graph change its slope. On the other hand, for the current of short circuit, it is necessary to know that this is generally an indication that the membrane already has a considerable lifetime. The steeper the slope, the more worn the membrane will be. To find its value, you must calculate the short circuit resistance by means of the law of Ohm, and then you get the IL current. The calculation of these values can be seen in the equation shown on the screen. With equation two, it is possible to find the hydrogen crossover, where N is the number of equivalents per mold and 964. 85 is the Faraday constant. Then, based on the hydrogen crossover values obtained, empirical correlation were proposed to describe the behavior of the limiting current density and the hydrogen crossover as a function of the temperature. To achieve it, it the fitting tool of MATLAB was used. The result. Five linear feed voltammetry tests were for a temperature range between 40 and 80 degrees centigrade in intervals of 10 degrees centigrade. Figure 8 shows the result obtained, which follow a typical behavior of linear feed voltammetry. The limiting current for the set of curves is between 0.9 and 1.4. This occurs approximately at 0.1 voltage and is associated with the hydrogen desorption reaction. As of this point, the current increased linearly IS. This process is known as a short circuit and is associated with pristine cells. It is mainly characterized by the gradual increase in hydrogen crossover as the voltage increases. In the curve corresponding to the temperature of A degrees centigrade, noise appears in the data. One of the main causes of the noise observed in the data is the formation of water inside the cell. Water comes from the humidification of the gases, which when passing inside the PEFC, water condensation is produced. The water observed in the membrane lengthens the polymer chain, which produces an increase in the volume of this allowing a greater diffusion of hydrogen. Uh, the data trend shown in figure eight indicate that the temperature proportionally affects the hydrogen crossover. This phenomenon can be explained by the gas permeability coefficient, which depends on the temperature to which the gas is subjected. The diffusion coefficient is also affected by the particle's movement, and a higher temperature implies that the particles have higher energy so they collide more quickly with the membrane surface, causing hydrogen diffusion to increase. This implies that, that the degradation of the product exchange membrane is accelerated when working at a high temperature since the hydrogen permeability would increase each time. Further, which can cause the formation of hydrogen peroxide during cell operation. It is important to indicate that the results may vary depending on the operating condition to which the experimentation is subjected. But it is clear that the data follows a fixed growth trend along with the temperature. Based on the experiment data, 
three correlations were proposed to describe to quantify the corrected current density as a function of the temperature. The correlations are shown in table one. For the election of the best model, the parameters of R squared and RMSE were analyzed. Following these criteria, the model that best describes the data trend is the linear function. Further, it is worth mentioning that the validity of the model is in the range of 40 to 80 degrees centigrade, keeping a relative humidity of 100%, but it can be used as a reference for experiments using similar parameters to calculate the hydrogen crossover. The correlation must be multiplied by this factor. And for the last, the conclusions. Uh, in the present study, the effect of a temperature of the hydrogen crossover through Nafune 212 was evaluated based on the results obtained was determined that the hydrogen crossover increases when the temperature increased between 40 and 80 degrees centigrade. There was an increment of 41% between the first and the last value of the hydrogen crossover. Additionally, it was suggested that an excess of humidification of the reactant gases produces water formation inside the PEFC due to the water condensation and this results in noise in the final column.